had to create a drawing that was for the cover for 7D system that evoked all the different aspects of the game and gave it that sort of role-playing sensibility that most people know and love and harkens back to kind of old school feel. So there's a lot of elements that I've included in this illustration which is from my background in, in, in doing this sort of thing. Now I did do a mock-up of this using various different elements uh, of photography to just kind of plan out where things were, the kind of shapes that things would be. And I did use that as a way of laying out, because I needed to know where the title and all that kind of stuff was going to be um, placed. And then I went into just thinking about the characters and the typical four-person party and the types of characters you'd find in other games, you know, the wizard, the fighter, the thief and the cleric, etc. And then kind of built upon those various aspects and then the different species that you tend to find as well. So the first one that I drew there, you can see the wizard and this is the half-orc sort of barbarian type person. Um, and it's this is not about how to draw things. There's a thousand different channels on how to draw. This is a channel more about the why. The why are things in the image? Why are we doing certain things a certain way? Um, and what is the feeling that one's trying to evoke from the image? Um, so, you know, part of the initial plan is just lay down the structure of the image with pencil. Um, and then when I get to a certain part of it, uh, begin to work it out more in more detail with the pencil and then do some line work and then also some texture and shading. Now the first thing that I did start with is the torch and that's because I, I tend to start with a light source first. Whether I actually detail the light source first or not um, differs from every, every drawing that I do. But really the light source gives me an idea of where the light is coming from um, and that gives me an idea of where the shadows should be. So, um, and also the type of shadows as well, in terms of the type of light source. You've got a flickering flame torch here. And we're, we are perceiving this entire scene through the mouth of some kind of monster. Now, we don't know what kind of monster this is. It's just, it's got razor sharp teeth and it has lots of tentacles. How many tentacles it has doesn't really need to be defined, but the, high, the, the core thing behind 70 system is the sense of struggle that you have in any kind of combat situation. The, you, the struggle is what's important here. So these four characters are struggling with this monster. They're doing different things with weapons. The half orc here is trying to stab it with a sword. You can't see the hilt of the sword yet. But um, you also then have the um, other guy is throwing an axe and the wizard is attempting to cast a spell and the guy with the torch who's on the ground is trying to brandish his sword and that will get revealed as we continue on with the illustration so i do various different textures of various different things so there on the shield you've got sort of the the wooden texture always like the knots in the wood because that really identifies it as wood when you when you um, have the texture and you can have one or two of those and the rest is just lines that um, carry on that motif so you just have to show a little bit of that sort of thing to sort of solidify in the viewer's mind that it is actually wood um, and then you know continue on with a different sorts of shading and that sort of thing now when i went to the tentacle i was using a an octopus photo of, photos of octopus octopus tentacles as reference um, very interesting structures those uh, you see they're not all uniform in shape they all differ and there's um, a very different feel to that than to the other textures so not not a scaly but more a rubbery kind of look you want to achieve with that that's why i really went with um you know a cross hatching sort of style on there but it varies again with the suckers so the suckers have a different kind of textural feel to them what I also like is to get a sense of movement that's actually happening as well. Uh, whether that's achieved or not is obviously up to opinion. Um, uh, sometimes I feel I do, sometimes I feel that I don't. In this, you've got the flapping of his jacket, 
and the movement of the the um, back things of his hat that he's wearing, the sort of Mongolian type hat. Um, obviously a mixture of different cultural styles and things. You've got the little uh, earrings with the sort of fur bits on the half orc and the traditional wizard type hat but with no symbols on it uh, for the wizard guy. Um, and you know usually once I've done it in pencil I'll then ink the lines and then fill in the shadows and then do um, the texture. Sometimes I'll do the entire image first in pencil, then in lines, and then do all the shading and the, then the texture. Or sometimes I'll do it this way where I block out certain sections. Uh, sometimes it's because I want to see what the image feels like before I continue in order to um, then decide on what sort of bricks we should have on the wall. Should they be round stones or actual bricks or should they be you know, tiles? Um, sometimes I don't actually know that until I've got to that point in the image. Um, and here we're just continuing on with the, the tentacles and building a lot of detail into the image, working on small areas, uh, working on small areas of shadow and all that sort of thing. It begins to build up interesting portions of the image. And one thing I like, when the, sometimes in my drawings there's a point where something almost pops out of the page uh, three-dimensionally. You get the sense that there is, you're looking into a three-dimensional space when obviously it's two-dimensional. And there, there's a point I'll show you later um, where that happens. Um, and sometimes I achieve this in my drawing, sometimes I don't. But I'm always looking to try to get that real sense of something popping out of the page. Even though it's in black and white, I'm not using any kind of color. Um, the, the, the placement of the objects and the light uh, and the light sources help to, to bring that sort of thing around. So again, doing the, the line art work first with the, um, the, the ink pen uh, and the saliva dripping off the teeth. Again, these are small details that people may not have even noticed in the original image, but it, you know the whole image gives you that sense of dread. So you look at the, the emotion in the faces. Um, that's why I started really with the faces before I did any of the other parts of the body, because it's important that Th that emotion is shown and the wizard is obviously in a state of shock um, the guy throwing the axes uh, has a, a lot of fear in his eyes and the half orc has a lot of determination so you've got all the different types of emotion that comes into a battle on the faces of the of these characters and that was done deliberately so that's you know that's um, not a happy accident sometimes it is a happy accident but that was actually um, done deliberately um, and then this axe, there was an attempt to get a sort of reflective metal look to it from the shimmering um, fire of the, of the light source. I don't think I really achieved it very well with that axe. Um, uh, I probably could have used a little more reference pictures for that. Um, but, you know, there's always going to be something you're unhappy with in an illustration. Um, and it's good to just move on and learn for next time. So doing more detail in the wizard's cloak, um, there's a lot more in shadow. Once he's got the book there, his hand becomes more shadowed um, as the, the light is from above and you're not getting a lot of detail on the front of the book. Um, and obviously he is at the back, so there's a lot less um, that we see of him. And originally he had a quarterstaff and I changed that to his hand raised. Um, and that was a decision because I I wanted the sense of him attempting to cast a spell, which you wouldn't have with a quarterstaff. So as you're going along, you, you, your ideas for things may change, um, and so you, you before you put your ink to paper, your ink is obviously a deliberate line. That line remains when you're when you're illustrating pen on paper. If you're doing it digitally, obviously you can control Z and all that sort of thing, but you know. Sometimes you write, this is a deliberate line, you may have made a quote-unquote mistake, I don't really think it's a mistake, but it, it would be something where you, you want to work around your original intention and change it to something else. There's been a few incident, inc incidents of that in this image. Um, I probably would have preferred the half-orc sword to be more visible from behind the axe. The axe probably could have been a little bit higher than that. But overall, in the end, it's better because we needed the tentacle at the top that eventually will wrap around the logo of 70 system. Um, so that's why the axe is a little bit lower there. Um, 
so it doesn't it doesn't in the end it doesn't really matter as much I'm I'm not like I'm losing sleep over it uh, again we're doing a little bit harsher lines around the edges of certain things so it will pop out that character from the background or also when you're laying in just a dark uh, an area of darkness um, you're not going to accidentally go over a piece because you've basically already done the outline of that so that's that's a function of why why that is there and then I'm using the perspective to then do the um, uh, lines of confluence that uh, will congregate congregate towards oh, so what is the word anyway they all lean towards the same vanishing point now that helps us to draw the eye into the image so that again we're going to focus on the faces because the human mind identifies faces first so the only issue here is the fourth character on the ground is, is sort of lost um, but it's not really an issue because he is he is actually being subdued by the tentacles so it kind of works in in that in that sense um, that I would say is probably a, a happy accident from from that perspective it wasn't my original intention but it sort of works from that extent and again you've also got the fear in his face um, and here with the darker patches now I spoke earlier about things starting to pop out and you look at the guy throwing the axe there's the the three dimensionality of him popping out of the image with that shadow on the wall that shadow on the wall really helps to separate him from the background but the background itself once we've placed it in with all the texture and everything he actually kind of stands out from that when you when you see the image um, live and not uh, recorded in low res like this um, you'd be able to see what I mean um, it's it's a particular thing that I try to achieve with Im every image is have that sort of sense of depth but also the there's so much detail crammed into this image that you, you, you there's a lot to look at and you you can spend quite some time just having a look around the image and finding interesting things and um, I like to make little interesting things all over the show a little change of, of a brick here or a crack there Something that, you know, when someone is taking the time to really go over and appreciate the image, there's um, more detail for them to, to, to find, effectively. Um, and again, we're now using large areas of shadow. Uh, one thing that this helps me do is eliminate the amount of actual drawing that needs to be done in terms of textures and that sort of thing. Um, so I really do like the sort of harsh lighting um, I use a significant amount. Um, that's the lazy person in me. I, I mean, I say I'm lazy. This this illustration probably took 10, 12 hours to complete. Um, but uh, you're only seeing it in about a 15-minute chunk. Uh, but really, the amount of texturing and detail that starts to go into this image, you can see if I had to continue that in where all the dark areas of black are, it would um, it would take a lot longer. But that being said, I think I, I, I like that style because it not only speeds up the final drawing, it also gives it a very distinctive kind of feel to it. Very old school D&D rulebook, um, kind of look like a Jeff D sort of image. Um, and to an extent, the line work is very cartoony and comical, uh, not comical, but comic book style. Um, but that changes when you do the texturing and the the um, shadows and things like that. I mean, there are comic books that do do it in this style, but it's not the standard style um, from the ones that I've seen. I, mean, I have not read every comic book there is, so of course there may be ones that differ and they may be closer to this style. But I enjoy black and white. Um, it, to me, if you're trying to evoke a sense of color using two tones, um, that's something very difficult to do um, and uh, yeah I, I don't think that I've achieved it but um, at least you can see what's going on and the light source and everything has, as the image has been built up and uh, you can see the shadows and all that kind of stuff being put in to give it that three-dimensional three-dimensionality to it now currently I do use white markers to do some of the white lines 
um, but I just left the white spaces for this. So that's it. So then I scan it into Photoshop and uh, manipulate the curves in order to get make the blacks black and the whites white. And uh, then you can see that area I was talking about where the, the guy pops out from the background. Um, I feel that, you know, that is what I was attempting to achieve there and I think that that worked. Obviously that's my opinion, but um, you know, if, uh, if you have any other questions or anything, of course, just leave them in the comment section below. And then of course, I did a little bit of colorization and put in the logo and this is the current cover for 70 system. Thank you for watching.